nice thing Biden is doing today. We've had many, if you remember Yo-Yo and Vanessa, many military people on our show who got deported. If anybody's been supporters of our military personnel who have gotten deported, it's us here at Bradshaw Live. So I was really, really happy to hear that Joe Biden has announced today that he is gonna review the deportations of veterans and military family members that occurred under the enforcement policies of Donald Trump. Now, we've had plenty of people on, including family of Alejandra Juarez. She was a guest on our show with her daughter, Pamela. You may have remembered that her husband voted for Trump. Remember, her husband yeah. voted for Trump. And he said, I didn't think when he said he was gonna kick out all the, the bad gringos that it was gonna be my wife. Now, after almost 20 years living in America and no criminal record, Alejandro was deported to Mexico in 2018, despite being married, to a United States Marine, having two American-born children. And Alejandra's story was by her 11-year-old daughter, Estrella, at the Democratic National Convention in August. Now, for service members and veterans, Trump's stricter policies at times led to immigrant soldiers or veterans having their naturalization applications denied at a higher rate than civilians not in the military. Those policies also led to deportations of some veterans or family members of currently serving military personnel. We had a bunch of military people on our show, all who were deported and all had similar stories. If you remember, they came to the United States as teenagers or children. This is the country they knew. They signed up to be in the military. They went to war to protect the United States of America, whether it was Iraq or Afghanistan or anywhere else around the world. And they came back believed they were Americans, thought they were Americans, had some form of post-traumatic stress disorder. We heard this story a lot. Did yeah. something dumb and got deported, okay? And, and it was the same thing we were asking all the time. Where was all of the support, both health-wise, mental support, and physical support for our, our veterans that come back with post-traumatic stress disorder? Where was that support? They, there was none. And then when they do something, you know, you're in war, you know, bombs yeah. are flying everywhere and you come back to this calmness, you can understand why you need an adrenaline rush again. I mean, honestly, I, yeah, I get it. Yeah, on, honestly, um, I think it's embarrassing and a joke. Our country, like the fact that they send these people out knowing of their status or whatever it is and when they come back, like you say, have no support. In Ethiopia and Eritrea, you know, my family's really from Eritrea, but they were raised in Ethiopia. They were in war for 30 years, from the 70s into the 90s. And so many of them, either they were blinded by explosions, they lost limbs, men and women, children as well that they put in. But the one thing about it is the people showed love to the veterans. The people would bring them in even me growing up in the United States in LA, all I remember as a kid is my mom bringing veterans from Ethiopia and Eritrea to our house in LA and actually getting them set up with school, starting their lives in the country. And the fact that, you know, I, I grew up seeing my people do that and we are here and you see the Americans just literally throwing them out to the battlefield. And when they come back, they have no support. It's embarrassing. And, and not it really is. All right. And they don't get support. And if you happen to have been an American born here or naturalized here, you know, you wind up in jail or more luckily, you know, you get support and help before you do something bad. You know, you get treatment here. Exactly. You know, you don't get support. You do something bad. And you've, this is the only country you've known your entire life since you were a kid. And yeah. then I, I remember the story of the veteran who said he was in jail for seven years. He came back, he's a US citizen now. He was in jail for seven years for drugs. Yeah. And then they shipped him out to Texas and he thought he was gonna get released. And they told him to walk across a bridge with the clothes on his back and he was stuck in Mexico. It's sick. Yeah. It really is. And this is because I guarantee you these people with power wouldn't have done that to their own family members that went out to the war. Of course not.
You know? That part. Of course Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know what? You should it's, be it's... treating humans as human beings. You, you should treat people the same way you would want to treat your loved ones or you, have your loved ones treated. You know, yo, yo, it really comes down to this. You know, when you meet somebody face to face and you know them and you have a relationship with them, there's a level of empathy that you build for that yes. person. And yes. you say, and now if that person's, you know, out of status or a deportable alien, you say, oh man, come on, give them a, give this person a break. They're right. really, really, really good person, you know? But everybody else, these, these nameless, faceless people out there who you don't know, get rid of them. Who needs them? I mean, that's how mm -hmm. people feel. It's sad. What it comes down to. Right? It's sad. Yeah. It is very sad. Yeah. It's very sad. So unfortunate. And then our politicians, they know better. <laughs> they know better. Our politicians know a lot better. Privately, yeah. they'll say, yeah, it's really terrible what's going right. on. Right. Privately. Privately, <laughs> they'll say it. But you want to know what? That doesn't help. They don't, they, they don't care about human suffering. Right. Because if they cared about human suffering, we would not have the immigration policies we have. They care yeah. about power and they care about keeping their position and they care about gaining more power because you know i guarantee you i guarantee you if you sat down with each of these politicians who are very anti-immigrant and you sat mm -hmm. down and you showed them story after story you know many on our show many people calling on our show and you say isn't that a sad situation don't you think we should be helping people like this they would have to say yes. Of course. So I'm glad that Biden at least is going to take a look at helping our deported That's veterans. Great. A 2019 government accountability office report found that there were more than 200 veterans, 250 veterans right now in deportation. God knows how many already got deported. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.